Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Gerson and welcome to the Pinecrest Business Association Member Spotlight. Today I'm joined by Maurice Gomez from 24 7 Nursing Care, right? Yes. Did I say it, it right? That's oh, correct, that was a tongue twister for me for some reason. That's correct. Thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. So, you know, Maurice and I spent a lot of time together at these networking events and, um, Lewis Major has been on representing 24-7 Nursing Care as well. But today we're going to learn a little bit about more about Maurice and a little bit more about 24-7 Nursing Care. So give us a little history on yourself before we get started on the business side. Thank you, Jen, first of all, for having me. As she said, I'm with 24-7 Nursing Care, and I am here representing the company I strongly believe in. I'm very involved in our community. We do a lot of work with elder care committees, and I see you often, as you mentioned, and again, it's something that I take pride in. I, it's one of my passions in helping the community and the elders in our community. So 24 seven hour nursing care, what, do, what services do you guys offer and how long have you been around? We've been around for about nine years and I've been with the company for about six years. And the services we offer are something that's crucial in our community, something that everybody takes for granted. When we have a loved one that can't be at home alone, that's when we come in and we offer our services. When in speaking with you previously and speaking with other colleagues and just speaking with individuals in our community, what we do is we help them keep their integrity, keep their life as they know it, and we help them in the home. We help provide a caregiver, and it's something that we do to service them. So how does the process work? Does what we do is we normally get a call. We get a lot of referrals from rehabs or just individuals that we know in our community. And they give us a call letting us know that mom or dad are unable to be at home alone, whether it's cognitive or whether it's after a surgery, maybe after a hip replacement or after a knee replacement, any life altering event at an older age, it's something that we come in to help. So they call us, we do an initial assessment on the phone and then either Lewis or myself come out to the home, we do an in-home assessment. We explain to the client everything that we have to offer. We do assessment of the home, make sure there's safety precautions in place, which is our number one goal. We do strive in making sure that the safety is priority in the home. And we discuss with the family what the needs are, what's needed for that individual. You mentioned elder, but it's not just elders. Like a, if a younger person has a major surgery. It's not just elder. I do mention elder because it is the primary de demographics the that, business, we, right? that we assist. But we do from catastrophic care, we have pediatrics at times. We do have individuals that are in their 30s, 40s, anything that alters your state of life that you can't be left alone. When you can't be left alone and you need someone there to watch over you is when we send a great caregiver that we've vetted and we've done our homework on to take care for your loved one. So yeah, I probably could. So, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I had a total hip replacement in. Oh, um, I did not know that. In this before COVID. Everything's like before. It's like the before time stamp of COVID, life yes. right now, right? <laughs> so it's in December before COVID hit. And I probably could have used your services, but I was one of those people. I'm going to do it myself. And I and it is. It's something that people take for granted. Just simple, what we call activities of daily living, which is showering, showering, getting <laughs> I mean, in and out yes. of a chair, especially putting after your hip shoes or, on, putting on your shoes, anything yeah. to that extent, it would be a caregiver there to help you go through that process and alleviate the pressure on loved ones that have to go back to work yes. or aren't able to tend to you. Yes, yes, fully. right. Or don't want to deal with you because you're probably not the nicest person <laughs> at that point in time. Um, so we just talked about COVID. Are, are, are you guys able to help with COVID positive patients? We are. We do have a large influx and I know that the numbers have been going up and there's a lot of patients that want to be kept out of the hospital setting. Mm -hmm. And if they want to be kept out of the hospital setting, we're there and we're able to help. We have a large demographic of caregivers that are willing to take COVID patients. And it's at a different rate because unfortunately right now it's something that we're seeing. There is a hardship with some caregivers, but we have had no issues in staffing them. And we make sure we send out the same quality. So and there's have, a premium for a COVID patient there is because a premium. there's more of a high risk. There is a premium and there is PPE that we actually give the caregivers. Mm -hmm. So we make sure everything is covered. Right. The client does not have to worry about anything. When they go into the home, they actually go in with all their full PPE gear and they're able to tend to them the same quality care that they would give a, a non-COVID patient. Right. And are you seeing an, an uptick of numbers with the Delta variant with COVID patients? We are. Again? We are seeing an uptick of numbers and we are seeing different individuals 
that have had COVID in the past. At the very beginning, it's we've been, like you said, pre-COVID and post-COVID, we've been dealing with this for about a year and a half now. So it's people that have gotten COVID, some people have gotten it again. And again, if it's the elderly population, they're a little bit more susceptible with lower immune systems and other ailments that they might have, but we're there to help them. So what is the process of, of matching a caregiver with a patient? I'm sure there's a lot of steps and personality. and There's a lot of steps, and I'm going to tell you it starts with their initial conversation. When either Lewis or myself take the phone call, we make sure we ask all the questions that would deem the information that we need for our staffing department to put in place the best caregiver. Our second step would be we make a visit to the home. Now, we make a visit to the home to speak to the family members, to get to know the client, and to also do an assessment of the home. We make sure that if they need help bathing, do they have grab bars? Do they have a wide enough hallway for wheelchairs? We make sure all of that is in place. And if not, we could refer them to companies that do do that type of service oh, perfect. as you know, as an added measure to having a caregiver in the home. Um, that's perfect. So the assessment not is only a personal assessment, it's assessment of the home, their caregiver situation, Absolutely. who they have, what they don't have. Yes, that's and we wonderful. try to get to know what the client's needs are. If the client is an Alzheimer's client and they're struggling with cognitive issues, if they're struggling with memory issues, we make sure we place them with a caregiver that has had Experience. a client with someone with Alzheimer's or dementia with that same realm of work. What that does is they know how to handle that client. You know, mm -hmm. there's many issues with Alzheimer's, just as an example, because it is one of our main things that we see in, in our client demographic. And something as simple as reminding them to brush your teeth. If they say, no, I don't want to brush my teeth, you don't confront them. You know, they're trained. They're not, okay, in five minutes, you're going to ask them again, and they'll say yes the right. second time around. Right. It's the way to get around them. And knowing that maybe between 4 and 7 p.m., there is something called sundowning. And it's something that happens in Alzheimer's patients in the later hours of the evening when the sun actually sets. And all these, they're trained on how to do this. Let's say, like you mentioned, you had a hip replacement. There's a lot of clients that specialize in post-operative care. So if they deal with post-operative patients, they don't have to worry about, Jen is perfectly fine. You know, there's no cognitive skills there, but she needs help getting in and out of the chair. She needs right. help maybe bathing, tying her shoes, something like that. Right. And um, is, is, ins does insurance cover this type of care? The insurance that we take, it's long-term care insurance. Long-term care insurance, we take all every single policy that's out there. They cover our services. Traditional health care insurance does not, unfortunately, cover our policy, cover our, our care. Mm -hmm. But if they have a long-term care policy, that's how most clients. And does, for you mentioned a lot of the, the population of your patients are older. Does Medicare assist with that or that's just a long-term Unfortunately, care? they don't. They don't assist with this. They do offer home health care. Mm -hmm. Medicare offers home health care if there's a skilled need involved, meaning if there's physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, or wound care visit by an RN, they'll provide you an aid, but not for what we do. We do services that are geared for eight hours a day, 12 hours a day, somebody that's going to be there to just be a second set of eyes for you while you're at work. That Medicare does not cover. So, um, your 24-7 nursing care. You have a sister company, 24-7 home health care. So what's the difference? And we what do. are the different types of services that the sister company offers? We do. And we felt while we were while we were evaluating our yearly needs, we were two years ago, we noted that there's an e a need for additional physical therapy, speech therapy after the insurance has finished providing their services. Let's say after hip replacement. And I'm going to use you as an example, That's Jen. Fine. I'm sorry, but it's a quite all right. After, I put it out there. <laughs> after a hip replacement, you had physical therapy maybe for six weeks. Yes. And after six weeks, maybe you felt you weren't as strong or you felt I might need a little bit of extra yes. physical therapy. The insurance says, I'm sorry. Your doctor says you're fine. That's where we come in. Gotcha. There's a need after the insurance has covered the services. Mm -hmm. We would do any physical therapy, any occupational therapy, any speech therapy after the insurance doesn't cover now, a lot of times we have clients that we do the regular aid visits for. They already know us. They know we've been with them for years and they opt to pay for our services and not go through the insurance because they're familiar with us. They know the type of white glove service we give. They right. know that I'll get in my car at any time. Lewis will get in his car at any time and we'll make whatever needs happen for them. Wonderful. That 
it, it's nice that you're covering, you know, more than just one, one, you know, facet of the business. We are. And there's, I mean, there's a need for what we do. And we started the company, um, the owners, Lewis and Fernando started the company because there was a need in our community. But the main thing is that we care about our clients. We're not just looking to fill numbers and get a high census. That's not what we do. If I can't help you, I'm going to call one of my colleagues and I'm going to call another resource in our community and I'm going to make sure you get the care that you need. And I'm going to help you through the process, whether it's navigating through long-term care insurance or it's getting you proper doctor's orders, something that's out of our realm, but you need the assistance. Mm -hmm. We're going to go above and beyond. And our staff is all trained and they're loving individuals that care about the community and what we do and they believe in what we do which is very important. You know, it seems like you're an extension of the family care, which is so important to the family members when they're facing these things that they just don't know how to take care of. Right. Um, so it, it, it's wonderful to have people, you know, like you out there that that offer these services and that have the caring touch because that's, that's the magical difference. It is. And it makes a difference because we, again, we take time in getting to know them. Mm -hmm. And that right there is key because if I'm taking care of you and I know that you're a young individual is still working, I'm not going to treat you the same after your hip replacement, after somebody that's 80 years old and we just have to sit and watch TV. It's, it's not the same. Right. It's, and it's, that's important. It's nice that you client. go out there and you do that personal assessment at first because you get to actually know the client. You get to know their surroundings. You get to know their their family. Um, the family dynamic. Fam that yes. right there is, are they alone in the home or do they live with family? Yes. If they live alone in the home, we have a lot of things that we could do. And we can let the family members know. Let's say it's an Alzheimer's patient and they live alone. And there's iPad games. We could tell the family, buy an iPad. They could play games. Something as simple as sitting with them going through old photo albums. Little things that the caregiver is going to do without it being a skilled care is going to help them immensely just by not being alone, by taking the time to actually listen to actually, like you said, being an extension of the family mm -hmm. makes a difference. Absolutely. So where can people find 24-7 nursing care? We are, you could find us online. If you Google us, it's 24-7nursingcare.com. And if you call us, we are Miami-Dade and Broward County and Monroe County. I know that sometimes there's individuals that live that are in the hospital here, let's say in Miami-Dade County at one of the Baptist facilities or any other hospital, and they live in the Florida Keys. We could continue with care at the Florida Keys, which is a, a lot of people don't know that about us. Mm -hmm. So, so you're Tri-County. We are in all three counties. And we extend from Key West all the way to the northern part of Broward County. But our local phone number is 786-518-3622. And again, if you look for us on the web, it's 24-7nursingcare.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely, and for this information. Jen. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. If you guys have family members that are in need, whether it's elder care or post-surgical care, please reach out to them. They are wonderful people. Um, thank you to the Miller brothers for hosting us as always. Thank you to Tommy for running the show. You're the best Tommy. Um, Pinecrest Business Association, our next networking luncheon is Tuesday, September 21st. Um, keep an eye out to emails and online and social media for more details on the luncheon, but plan on joining us on Tuesday, September 21st at 1130. I look forward to seeing you guys out there again next week. Thank you for watching today and have a great Labor Day weekend. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, for having me. Thank you, Maurice.